Hello, this is Craig from bizbox.co.uk and in this video I'll show you how to paint a Lake Town house. Hello, so as I said in the intro, this is a painting tutorial for the Lake Town house. Here it is, um, I'll show it off better at the end of the video, we're going to have a nice 360 degree um, look at that. So yeah, this um, Video is a first in a new painting series, um, so I've sort of changed how, how I've got these set up for the painting tutorials. Um, hopefully it's better, hopefully it looks better for you guys, and um, hopefully you guys enjoy it. Um, a little bit more sort of production there, as I said we've got the 360 degree view as well, and the lighting is quite good. So yeah, um, hopefully you guys like it, and if you do, um, please do let me know in the comments, and if there's anything um, you still would like to see sort of further improved then please do leave a comment below and also if you want to see anything in particular um, painted or any sort of um, painting style for a certain miniature etc. I'm going to try and do sort of more um, begin to end miniatures, train pieces etc. So if there's anything you guys would like to see me paint up then please please do leave a comment below. So um, yeah let's just crack straight on into it. Okay so here we have the Lake Town house. It's been undercoated using army painters and coloured sprays so I think I've used like a leather brown I think it was it's one of the browns um, if you don't have them I would recommend undercoating it in chaos black um, I wouldn't go with white because it might end up looking a bit too bright so we're gonna start off by painting the wood panels on the miniature and we're gonna take some Mephiston red and this is why um, I said don't start with a white undercoat because this would end up looking quite bright and we want it to sort of dry quite dark. So as you can see um, I've thinned it out so I can get into all the recesses. So we will need a couple of coats. It does look quite bright as it goes on but once it dries and the colour will settle down and it will look um, quite a lot darker and having that brown sort of base does sort of help with the colour that I'm trying to achieve. So just go around all the panels um, with a couple of thin coats of this colour. And as you can see, um, yeah, it's dried sort of quite dark. Now it's not fully dry in some places, but that's not to worry, because um, we're now going to paint all the beams that go around it. And we're going to paint all these with Steel Legion Drab. So it's the same principle again. Um, just doing a couple of thin coats. Um, the reason I thin it, thin it down because we want to get into all these recesses and we don't want to lose the detail on the wood grain either. So just be careful as you just go around here, try not to get any onto the red areas. There's quite a lot of this to do so it will take um, a little bit, bit of time but um, it will be well worth it in the end. And again it will um, need a couple of thin coats just to get a nice smooth finish. As you can see all the beams are now um, base coated. So next we're going to wash both these areas with Agrax Earthshade. I've uh, thinned out just a little bit and um, we don't want it to be too overpowering and too dark in the recesses but we do want to pick out um, all that wood grain especially on the beams um, not so much on the red areas but um, definitely on these beams and as you can see as I apply it that is picking them out even though it's thinned down that still, that still picks these areas out quite nicely um, you can see it's sort of pooling at the bottom um, you don't have to worry too much about that on the red areas so much but um, if, you, if you are a perfectionist just um, come back with a dry dry brush and you can get rid of that. And you see it's brought out all the detail um, really nice. So next we're actually going to work on the doors and there's also a, um, window shutters as well and we're going to do all them in the same colour and we're going to start with some Cyberite Green. Now that might seem quite bright but um, it does look nice <laughs> in the finished result. Um, you certainly will need two or three thin coats of this 
um, going on the darker um, undercoat, especially if you primed your miniature in black, then you'll certainly will find you'll need a few coats, or you could use one of the GW base paints first and then work your way up to this colour, of course. And see, um, we've got a nice solid coat there, and now we're going to shade it to bring out um, all the wood grain on the doors and the windows, and we're going to use um, a null oil for this one. So this will darken the colour down, of course, as well as bringing out all that detail. So just apply it carefully, and again, um, I thinned that out a little bit, but not as much as I did with the Agrax. And you just want to watch out for it pulling at the bottom. Again, it's not a major issue if it does, and you'll see why later on in the video, because we are going to add some weathering to all this wood um, in the next step. And you see, that's why I let these help. Um, really nice. So next, as I said, we're going to start with some weathering. So we're going to take some uh, Carrick Stone, and this is going to be dry brushed. So, I start by dry brushing it, um, just on the beams. Now you see I've got quite a large dry brush here. So it doesn't matter if you get too messy here, because we're also going to be dry brushing it onto the red areas as well, as you'll see in a minute. And this is to create a weathering effect on the red. So as you can see, it brings out the detail on all the brown areas really nicely, and that's me just pointing to where else we're going to go. So doing sort of a circular motion on the red areas, um, as I was painting more of this, um, I did find you can just do normal up and down strokes as well, but we're trying to build just sort of a weathered sort of look. Now we don't go all the way to the top of these red areas, we do sort of like sort of halfway and maybe three quarters, and we're doing the same on the doors as well. And that just makes them just look quite weathered, like the paint sort of wearing away. And here um, you can see that I've gone all the way around the house, weathering all these red areas, as well as the doors and windows, and highlighting all the beams as well. And that's what really brings it all together as well. So we're going to add some further weathering to this, and we're going to take take some dried bark. So again, we're sort of dry brushing this, but this time it's quite a heavy dry brush. So it's almost going on straight out of the pot, but just not quite. And of course, it's always best to do a little bit and then build the colour up to how you want it, rather than just going in with too much. And we're doing the same thing on the doors and windows as well. Now we're only dry brushing this just to the very bottoms. Sort of to represent where maybe there might be some water damage. Um, yeah, I assume it's just sort of from water damage. And when I do this bit here, you'll notice that I've gone too thick. And you can see the difference sort of straight away between having a heavy dry brush and putting it on too thickly. So, um... Yeah, just be mindful of that. And now you see, I must give quite a nice sort of weathered effect to all the wood. So next we're gonna um, paint the roof. And we're going to base coat it with Dawnstone. So again, um, thin the paint out, because you want to get it into all the little um, recesses on the roof tiles. We're also going to paint the beams going around the roof also, and um, the beam going across the top. So everything um, here will be painted in Dawnstone. Again, there's going to be two or three thin coats to get a nice solid colour. And we're also going to paint these sort of tile things um, on the side of the um, building as well. I just quickly looked around to see if there was any more. I think, because there's, um, there's different um, ways you can build the top half of this. And I think um, the other variants might have more of these tiles. 
and that's given us a really nice base coat, nice solid base coat. So next, um, we're going to get some Skaven Blight Dinge, and we're going to paint just some random tiles, really. Um, it's up to you how many or how few you wish to do here, but it just sort of breaks it up a little bit. Maybe these have been like some tiles that have been replaced further down the line, or they will not all been built from the same batch of tiles, or maybe there's just extra weathering. Um, I'm just sort of following the GW example here, and they have a lot of these sort of tiles broken up. Now they're sort of a little bit darker, so if you want yours to be darker, you could maybe mix some Avedon Black into the mix, or even use pure Avedon Black yourself. And it's a little bit hard to see on the camera, but there's, you know, I've done several of them there, and I think I do rotate it around just to show it off a bit, a little bit better. So you can see when it's not sort of in the bright lights. I painted just a few random tiles, and we've done the same on the side as well. So next we're going to bring all these together with a shade of Nuln Oil. And once again, um, I'm not a massive fan of using shades straight out of the pot, so I have thinned it down a little bit. Again, as I was saying earlier, it's always best to um, gradually build up the effect rather than just going in too heavy. So if you thin this down and it's not quite dark enough, then you can always come in with another coat of Nuln Oil. But for me, I just wanted a subtle um, shade effect in the recesses. And with that dry, that has produced a nice subtle shade. And just be mindful of it pulling up on individual tiles as well, because that will do that. Um, so next, we are going to dry brush Longbeard Grey. This is one of my favourite dry paints, actually. Um, really good dry dry paint if you're doing grey areas, no matter how dark or light they are, it just has a nice nice sort of light, sharp highlight. So I'm going to go over all the roof tiles, I'm being quite gentle with it, again just sort of building it up to how I want it. I'm going to do this on all the roof tiles and the tiles on the side of the house as well. And that will bring these colours together even more. And now you can see it's really bright the detail, brought the colours together and we have um, a really nice looking roof in my opinion. <laughs> so next we are going to paint the nets. And we're going to take some Ulfuan Grey. So of course you can paint the nets any colour you wish, but I sort of want to have them sort of like this. Sort of slightly just off white, or slightly gr light grey. So there's one on the front there, and there's also one on the side. You might want to do a couple of thin coats if you wish to um, get the colour in all the little holes, but it's not um, too much of an issue. So next we're going to paint some metal areas. We've got the door handles and there's some chain and some other little bits just on the side. And we're going to take some iron breaker. Now just carefully pick out these little rings. There's a chain hanging down as well. And as I said, we're going to paint the door handles with this also. Next we're going to shade both of the previous steps and we're going to take our old friend Nuln Oil. So I mean it's the third time I've used Nuln Oil in this video now. So all the nets will be shaded with this and you can see I'm sort of stippling it on more than sort of brushing it on just to get it into all these little holes. And then with the metal areas we're just going to just dab it on also. As you can see, I'm doing the other net here as well. And then just with the handle, just want a little bit, just to give it a little bit more definition. And also with the chain as well. So next up, we're going to dry brush the net with Rack White. Now I do a very gentle dry brush here very careful not to get it into any of the holes. So just be really gentle. It only needs to be a subtle highlight really. Um, the nets look quite good even before I applied 
uh, applied it, but um, I think it just brings out just a little bit more of the detail on the nets. Next up, we're going to highlight all the metal areas. And for this, we're going to take some Stormhost Silver. So, yeah, there's a little bit of a few second delay before I um, actually start applying it to the miniature. Um, I just had to give the pot just an extra little shake. I find sometimes with the GW Metallics, they do separate quite easily. And we're just applying this with a thin brush. Just hit them all the raised areas. Running run that down the chain. This will help just bring out the detail just a little bit more and just give it a little highlight. So next up we're going to paint this basket that's hanging up and we also have just some little bits of um, like twine or rope or something that's also hanging up and holding the net up. So just with this colour just give it um, a couple of thin coats and we don't want to lose too much detail in that net. With that dry, we can now shade them with Seraphim Sepia. So originally I was going to use Agrax Earthshade, but I thought that might just be a little bit too dark. So we're going in with a Sepia. And um, you can use Agrax if you so wish, of course. Again, I'm thinning it out just ever so slightly. And that will really bring out the detail on this basket. I do apologise. Um, painting some areas of this basket, my hand do get it. It does get in the way a couple of times. I just go around the rim of the basket also. And um, with the hanging down rope I haven't really um, bothered shading that. But we are going to highlight all these areas. And for that we're going to take some Ushabdi Bone. Now you'll see that the shades are sort of settled in one area a bit more than others. So I wasn't a bit happy with that. But once we get the dry brush on that will become less noticeable. So we're going to dry brush the shabby bone just all over the basket. Bringing out all that detail. And then I sort of go around the sides as well. It's a bit hard to show on camera at that angle. But there's um, quite a lot of detail around them edges as well. Now when it comes to painting the rope, we're going to go in with our small brush and we're just going to paint a shabby bone just on the raised areas, just as we as we have been doing with the metal areas. So with that, all these little details here are done and we can now move on to the windows. So typically if you look at a window from a distance um, they usually look black so we're going to get some Avedon black here and we've got to thin it down a little bit and paint it in all these diamonds here. Now when I was doing this I unfortunately thinned it down just a little bit too much so I think I end up coming back in with it again yeah and then um, a little bit heavier this time. You do want to have it thin though, so you can get in all these little diamonds. But um, yeah, don't thin out too much. And of course, if you do, you can just do extra layers. I think I ended up having to do about three layers because I thinned it out a bit too much. And there's this little bit just between this window up here as well. And um, depending on how you build your Lake Town house, you might not have this little bit. So next, we can paint all these little. Um, sort of window bars, I don't know what they're called, um, but we're going to take some carrot stone. Again, you want to thin it out because you got to be very careful here and just run your brush just along all these um, little bits going across the window. Um, I did need a couple of coats here, so it's a little bit time consuming because I've got about three or four of these windows to do. But just take your time and um, the effect is well worth it. And there you see we have the finished windows. So next up we've just got these um, sort of curtains up here, or drapes for our American viewers. Um, 
You can paint them any colour you wish, but I want to go with blue, so we're going to start with Cantor Blue. Um, my brush didn't want to keep a tip at this point, no pun intended. And um, so yeah, I was sort of going back and forth with the brush there, just trying to get get it to behave, but it didn't really want to have none of it, but managed to get a couple of thin coats on in the end. So lastly, we're just going to highlight these areas with techless blue. You can, of course, um, do a shade if you so wish, but I thought we'd just go straight into the highlight as I didn't want these to be sort of too dark in the recesses. And here we have the finished Lake Town House. So one little feature that I, I am adding to all the painting tutorials from now on is to have this 360 degree view of the miniature in all its painted glory at the end, just so you guys can really um, see the full miniature when it's been painted. Um, it was great fun to paint, and also um, great fun to make this tutorial. Um, it's a bit of a pain to build. Um, you can see just the odd little gap here and there, but it's not too bad. These houses are sort of like a bit rickety anyway, so it sort of adds a little bit to that. Um, if you have enjoyed this video, then of course please do give it a thumbs up. Um, you may also wish to subscribe to our page if you haven't done so already to keep up to date with all the latest um, painting tutorials, we have conversion videos, bat reps, um, etc. Um, we also have a Patreon page if you wish to support us further. And um, also there's a couple of videos now up on the screen that you might, may wish to also check out. So all that's left to say is thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all again in the next video.